Can you relate to these images? If so, you're not alone. Because if you're a big dog owner right now struggling with your dog pulling on leash and you're wondering whether or not a dog harness would solve your problems, well, you're in the right place. Because today, I'm going to give you the answer to that question as well as give you everything you need to know in order to pick the very best dog harness for your larger giant breed dog. If you're new to my channel, my name is Stephanie, AKA Big Dog Mom. And on this channel, I provide information and resources, tips and tutorials to help you and your big dog live your best life together. So if you're interested in the topic of dog harnesses for big dogs, stick with me and consider subscribing while you're here if you like this video. All right, let's get going. So before we get started, I wanna give you a little lay of the land, kind of what are we gonna cover in this video? So the first thing is I wanna give you just the pros and the cons to dog harnesses for large dogs. They're not gonna be the perfect fit for all dogs in all situations, so I wanna make sure that you're really clear with kind of what you're getting into. The second thing that we're gonna talk about is I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to measure your dog for a dog harness. Super simple, just a few steps, few measurements you have to take, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that here in just a minute. And then the third thing we're gonna talk about are the three different types of dog harnesses. I've got a couple of each different type that I'm gonna show you. you can see, you'll be able to see how they fit on each different kind of size dog. So we're gonna kind of talk about the pros and the cons of each different type of dog harness. And then the last thing we're gonna cover is just kind of a frank discussion about no pull dog harnesses. I'm sure you've seen that and many of them have no pull in the name. I wanna just kind of share with you my thoughts around the topic of no pull dog harnesses and just to give you a really realistic expectation if you, if you buy one of these tools, what you can expect. So before we get into the different types of dog harnesses and kind of how to measure your dog for a dog harness, I think it's really important to start this video with sort of a list of the pros and the cons to dog harnesses that I think you need to know before you buy one. So let's get into the pros. So the most obvious advantage to a dog harness, it's going to reduce the amount of pressure that's put on your dog's neck and spine, um, when, especially for dogs that pull a lot. Now, if you have a dog that's already healing by your side and understands loose leash walking and is right there and really doesn't pull on leash, then this is going to be less of an important advantage for you. But for people like myself who have dogs that do pull on leash sometimes, or those that pull a lot, this is going to be a huge advantage for you. On walks, it's going to reduce the amount of pressure put on the dog's neck and spine when the dog pulls ahead. So that's the first uh, major pro and the most obvious advantage to a dog harness. The second thing is that for some dogs, it can actually promote loose leash walking. And this is something that I explain in the blog post linked below this video that talks, that's a much more comprehensive kind of full definitive guide on dog harnesses for you. But in that guide, basically I kind of talk about this and why this is. So I'll just touch on this briefly, but it can promote loose leash walking and it has to do with the way the pressure is put on your dog with a dog harness. The way those pressure points are distributed across your dog can actually send a different message to your dog's brain versus the collar and the leash. It can promote loose leash walking for dogs that already sort of understand loose leash walking. They understand to sort of stay by your side. The next thing is, is a dog harness is gonna be a wonderful option for dogs of all ages. So from, you know, eight week old puppies to, you know, our advanced senior dogs, the a dog harness is going to be a fantastic option and really is going to be for all, all dogs. So that brings us to the next advantage to a dog harness. And that is gonna be for dogs with medical conditions where the, they could potentially be at risk or further injured if they wear a traditional collar and a leash. And so the perfect example is my junior with wobbler syndrome. It's a neurological disease. And I've done a couple of videos. I'll make sure that I link a card above so that you can watch that. But he's got a neurological disease where he's got compression on his spine in his cervical vertebrae. So wearing a traditional collar is going to potentially put him at higher risk. 
of further injury to his neck. And so I have him in a harness for that reason. And so there are other medical conditions as well. So that would be another advantage to a dog harness. The next advantage is going to be less sort of the, the medical side, but more of kind of the emotional side. Often a dog harness is going to be a much better option if your dog is reactive on leash. And so that can be kind of dog-dog reactivity. It can be, you know, when they see a person at a distance, they start to react. They could have fear issues or aggression issues. There's a whole host of things, but just under that umbrella of being sort of reactive on leash. And I talk about this in that blog post as well. Um, a, a harness may be the absolute best option for you. And then the last advantage to a dog harness is going to be if you wanna get involved with your dog in dog sports or any kind of service or any anything of that sort, uh, most of those dogs have sort of specialized options for harnesses that often for you know nose work and carting and even therapy work service work guide dogs they, they all are in some type of harness and there's lots of specialized options so let's go through a few of the cons to, to a dog harness compared to a traditional collar and a leash so the first most obvious con is going to be getting the exact right fit for your dog is going to take a few more steps it's not impossible clearly but it is not quite as easy as just attaching a collar and putting a leash on. So getting the right fit is gonna be really important. When you don't get the right fit, you can have a myriad of, of problems. So the dog can be uncomfortable, which can create a negative association with the harness itself and even for walks generally. So if the dog is uncomfortable every time they go on a walk, they can start to associate walks with sort of that negative feeling. The discomfort is the first most obvious reason you wanna make sure that you get the right fit, but that an improper fit would be a, a big con. The next thing is going to be pain. So for many dogs, you know, as they're moving, if their range of motion is limited, and that would be another consequence of an improper, properly fitted harness, but kind of that, that limited range of motion can create sort of pain, but it can also be pain because of skin chafing, because of the way the straps uh, may rub against the underarms of your dog and that sort of thing. So there's, there's a whole host of different consequences that can, that can result with an improperly fitted harness. So my goal, part of my goal with this video is to make sure that you've got everything you need in order to get that right fit. The next thing is it's going to require some conditioning on your part. It's a different feel to have something sort of hugging their entire body. And so you'll want to make sure that you condition your dog for the harness before you just step out and start walking. The next thing is it's going to be a little bit more expensive than a traditional collar and a leash because you're going to need the harness and a leash. So there's a little bit of an added cost there. The other thing is that we're gonna talk about the kind of the three different types of dog harnesses. And even within those types of dog harnesses, there's a pretty wide range of pricing options. My preference is to never really look at kind of the, the price of a, of a harness necessarily, but rather make sure that you're making the right choice for you and your dog, because they really all have sort of different advantages and disadvantages and uses. A harness in general is going to be a more expensive, I consider it an investment, but it's gonna be more expensive than a traditional collar and a leash. Remember, harnesses are a tool. They are not going to be a, a magic bullet that you put on and magically your dog is like, oh, really? You want me to stay by your side? <laughs> so without training and, and your dog really understanding what loose leash walking is and what that sort of heel is at your side, Putting a harness on a dog can, can create what I like to call the sled dog syndrome, SDS. It's not good. <laughs> so you put the harness on and you might as well be in the Iditarod because you are going for a ride. And so what I want you to understand and sort of have that, that realistic expectation is it can, in some cases, worsen the pulling. So keep that in mind. All right. So with all of that said, so we kind of went through our pros and our cons. Now let's go through, I'm gonna show you how to measure your dog. And for that, I need a couple of assistants. So I'm hoping that they will be cooperative because I've got one dog laying on my foot right now, which I doubt you can see. All right, let's get going. Getting a proper fitting dog harness for a large dog is dependent on two things, measuring accurately and making adjustments for a proper fit. To measure your dog, you will want to first grab a soft tape measure like the one I'm using here. I will put a link to this product down below in the description. 
But grab a soft tape measure, and you're going to take two measurements for nearly every manufacturer out there. The first one is the size at the base of your dog's neck. So not up under the ears, but rather towards the base of the neck, just above your dog's shoulders and chest. The next measurement is your dog's girth. And this is going to be taken around the thickest part of the chest, just behind your dog's armpits. Now, Keep in mind that just immediately right by your dog's armpits is, a, is, is not as wide as just beyond that point. So you're going to want to go out maybe an inch or two. And make sure that as you take these measurements, you are laying the tape measure flat against your dog's body. You don't want to cinch it tight and you don't want it to be loose. You want it to lay flat against your dog. Now, some manufacturers will also ask for you to take the measure of the length of your dog's body as well as the front leg length. So to do this, for for body length, you're gonna to wanna to measure from the withers or your dog's shoulder blades to the base of the tail. Now the base of the tail is where it attaches to your dog's bottom, not the tip of your dog's tail. And then leg length is just going to be the measure of the inside of the leg from the bottom of your dog's rib cage to the wrist bone. So. When you get your dog harness, you will need to make several adjustments to ensure you get a proper fit. Remember what I said earlier. Generally, this means cinching each strap so that you can fit two fingers between the strap and your dog's body. Keep in mind that excess material around your dog will result in impaired functionality of the harness and range of motion for your dog for that matter and decreased comfort with an increased risk of skin chafing so you want to be particularly mindful when you're taking measurements and fitting your dog for a dog harness. In the blog post link below this video, where I give my top seven best dog harnesses for large dogs list, I will provide for each one the maximum size that is available for that particular brand. The links in the blog post will take you to sizing charts where you can choose the right size for your dog based on the measurements that you're taking here. Okay, so let's talk about the three different types of dog harnesses. And really this is my category scheme, this is nothing official, but I like to think about dog harnesses for large dogs in kind of three different categories. So the first category is kind of the basic category and this is like it says, really the most basic. The next um, category is gonna be a more moderate coverage, a little more to these dog harnesses and we'll talk about kind of how they differ, but sort of a moderate coverage. And then the full support, dog harness. But let's start with the basic dog harness. So the basic dog harness, this is an example of one. This is the PetSafe Easy Walk harness. And I will have links to all of these in the description box below. And make sure that you go to the blog post that's linked below this video because I actually give you my top seven recommendations for uh, dog harnesses for large dogs. So kind of the best seven in my view based on all of my experience and um, through polling the big dog mom community. So I, I got I gathered input from hundreds of big dog owners. And so I give you the top seven best dog harnesses in the blog post below. The basic dog harness is kind of the most simple. So I'm gonna give you just a few of the pros and cons to each one of these categories. The pros to this, this type of a dog harness, and you'll see this one on Sully as we're talking here. This one actually does not fit Junior, so that would be one of the disadvantages of this type of a dog harness. The simple harness comes in pretty specific sizes, and this is an extra large, and it doesn't fit Junior. Now, Junior is huge, but um, he's a giant breed dog, so for many giant breed dogs, this one may not work for you just simply because the sizes don't go up uh, to large enough for many dogs. The biggest pro is that it's very inexpensive. It's found in every major you know, pet store, Petco, PetSmart, it's on Chewy, Amazon, etc. It's easy to find and it's pretty easy to put on. There's not much to it. There's really only a couple of adjustments. It basically does the job. When, you, when your dog is wearing this, it is uh, taking, reducing the pressure on their neck and spine, which is the primary function for a dog harness. So this does the job. Again, it's easy and pretty simple. There's not much to it. The biggest con as I see for this type of a dog harness is the, the strap. It's difficult to get, and you'll see when you see Sully in this harness, 
it's difficult to get like a perfect fit in my opinion because there's not very many adjustments on it if the fit isn't like the perfect fit it can cause some discomfort and chafing the way these straps are they're thin if it's not the right fit it can dig into your dog's arms and that was the experience when we used this it also seemed to not fit so well that it actually it impeded sully's range of motion for his front legs and so that is the biggest downside is just sort of the way that it fits it doesn't there's not a lot of customization to it to get like the perfect fit for every dog the other part about the the easy walk harness and these more simple ones is that oftentimes they only have one clip sometimes they'll have a, a back attachment a back clip as well as a front clip in the front of the chest this one happens to just have one so so you want to keep that in mind too if you're going to choose a simple dog harness that often they don't have the flexibility of a clip in both places depending upon what you what you need it for the second type of dog harness is the more moderate coverage dog harness and this is an example this is the freedom harness i actually bought this years ago for linus our previous mastiff who i talk about on the blog some of the the pros to the freedom harness and this these more moderate coverage dog harnesses are thicker material so you're going to get it's a higher quality thicker straps which are going to bring more comfort to your dog there's a, a ton more adjustment options you can get a more customized fit it's a little more expensive than the simple harness but the investment well worth the money in my opinion it does have a front clip and a back clip i think the two options the balance harness was the other example that i give in the blog post that i talk about and both of them have numerous adjustments and multiple clips this one actually i purchased the leash in addition to the harness itself so they're sold separately this enables you to walk your dog with the clip simultaneously in the front and the back for a little more control the biggest disadvantage for this type of a harness is number one the sizes don't go so like this one is an extra extra large and it does not fit junior so that's something to keep in mind if you just have a an enormous giant dog <laughs> that sometimes, especially around the middle, if their girth is so big and massive, this may not work for you. For the vast majority of dogs, it will work. The other kind of con would just be, if it's not fitted properly, it can uh, kind of chafe the skin. It can dig in. You can see when I put this on Sully, you'll see how this fits on him and it's not a perfect fit. So even with the number of times I've adjusted this and tried to get the right fit for him, it's not the best harness for his friend. Keep that in mind, but for the vast majority of dogs, especially if you just if you have a large dog that's not massive like a mastiff, but anything sort of smaller than that, this is probably going to work just fine. And it is going to be a really good option if you have a dog with reactivity issues. I actually bought this harness for Linus, who I talk about on the blog, but he had reactivity issues and aggression. So this is the harness that i bought for him this was the first harness that i actually ever purchased and i really liked it it did help but it didn't solve his problems. so again you know it's the whole point of this is a tool it's not going to solve your problems the third category of dog harness that we're going to talk about for large breed dogs is the full support dog harness we're going to talk about the pros and the cons to this type of dog harness but the primary difference is pretty obvious so you can see here are two different brands of full support dog harness and then you can see the way the moderate coverage and the basic look right off the bat you can see that there is a lot more to these full support harnesses than there is these two but that's not to say they're better they're just they're very different they fit differently and they are really for kind of a, a different purpose and really it's it's a matter of preference so let's talk about the the pros the biggest pro as i see it is these are more kind of premium quality generally speaking the quality of construction is going to be a lot higher they do come with a little higher cost so that would potentially be a negative depending on your your viewpoint but I consider this type of a thing to be an investment I mean it's something you use every day sometimes multiple times a day I figure spend the money on something of quality and and you'll get that and return you there are on many of these so i have two different brands here these are just the ones that i have in the blog post link below i give you examples of other ones and these are the two that i have for junior because as i mentioned before he has to have a harness so these are the two that i have for him but the kurgo is the one that we have been using for a very long time so there's numerous adjustment points to get a really customized fit and then there's a front 
attachment and a back attachment as well. So this allows me to, if I wanted to, I could actually hook both at the same time the way we talked about with the Freedom Harness. I generally just hold the top and then I hook the, the front of his chest. That's kind of how we walk usually. And then this is the duo harness that I just got. And this one is fantastic, but it's same thing. So there are numerous places where you can adjust to get a really customized fit, which I love. This one has a totally different mechanism where you hook in on the back of the dog and it actually kind of hugs the dog while you're, while, you know, if you pull up, it sort of hugs the dog's body, which is a really, it's a very different mechanism of action than this harness. You can adjust these pretty dramatically to get a really customized fit for your dog, which I think is fantastic and a huge plus when it comes to the different types of harnesses you can get for a large dog. You really don't have to worry about skin chafing with these. This is the extra, extra large size, again, for Junior, of the duo and this one comes with much thicker straps you can see how wide they are compared to like the easy walk i mean it's almost double this is about an inch and a half strap i want to say and then the kurgo it does have kind of the smaller straps which you know i guess you know between the two would be a, a potential negative but as long as you're able to adjust it and get the right fit, that shouldn't be a huge deal. You're not gonna have the issues with the skin chafing as you will with, with one of these two types. These are gonna be a, a really great option as well. Like we talked about with the Freedom Harness, this is gonna be a really good option if you have a dog that with reactivity issues because the pressure points on the dog when they have a harness on compared to the collar and the leash, you're gonna be distributing those pressure points throughout the dog's body versus the one single jerk if the dog is pulling. But these are gonna be a really great option if you have a dog with reactivity issues. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cons. The biggest con is gonna be, in my experience, having trouble finding brands and sizes that will fit a giant, enormous dog. <laughs> so, poor Junior, I ordered a few other brands before I found Kurgo. The Kurgo Extra Large does fit him. It's very tight, but it does fit. So it so we are maxed out in our adjustments. This was the one, like I said, that we've been using for a very long time because it was the only one that I could find that would fit him. In my research and then pulling together the best seven for you, there are others that will work for big, giant, huge dogs. You're gonna wanna take special care with picking a harness that has multiple different adjustments so that you can get a really customized fit so there's no discomfort or anything like that. The other con, as I mentioned before, is going to be cost. So while this, the moderate coverage is gonna be a little more expensive than the basic, the full support dog harness is going to be more expensive than, than either of these two. So again, I consider it an investment, but just know that going in, that could potentially be a con. The last thing I'll mention, and you know, we live in Arizona and have not had this issue, but I will bring it up because a couple of the big dog owners in the big dog mom community mentioned it, so I thought it was a really great point. So keep in mind that, as you can see, there's significantly more fabric to this, to, to either of these harnesses, compared to the straps on the moderate coverage and the simple dog harness. So consider that during the warm summer months, if you live in a really hot state like Arizona, you have a very heat sensitive breed, you'll wanna you know, keep that in mind that you know, if you're walking a bulldog, maybe a full support harness may not be the right choice if you're walking them in Arizona, which I don't know why you would do that, but you wanna make sure that you choose a harness that can kind of dissipate the heat. We've worn both of these and not had any problems and Junior is quite sensitive to the heat, as you can tell. It's not even hot in here and he's panting like crazy. So, so if you've decided after watching this video that you wanna get a dog harness for your large dog, here are eight things to consider. So the first thing is to make sure that you get the right size. So that's why we had the segment about measuring. So make sure that you measure properly and get the right size harness that will bring comfort to your dog while walking. It'll increase the range of motion and just make sure that it is the right fit that we've been talking so much about in this video. So the next thing is make sure it's machine washable, that you can pop it in the, the washing machine for good hygiene. So you'll wanna make sure it's machine washable, that's number two. Number three is that the style meets the function that you need it for. So we talked a little bit about you know, dog sports and different things and, and reactivity issues and whatever you need the harness to do. And we'll talk about no pull in just a second, but those no pull dog harnesses. But 
Just make sure that the style you choose meets the function that you need it for. Number four is gonna be make sure that the style meets your changing needs. So if you're buying a harness for a puppy, that your needs are gonna change as that puppy ages. Or if you are buying it for an adult dog and then you eventually have some medical needs down the road, that can happen too. So just make sure that the style meets, that is flexible enough to meet changing needs. The fifth one is make sure that the harness provides a full range of motion for your dog while walking. That will not only increase his comfort, but it'll also reduce the chance of having any kind of negative association with the harness itself. So make sure that there's full range of motion when you put that harness on. You get that through proper fit, but also the style will play into, play into that as well. Number six, make sure there are multiple adjustments so that your dog can get a really customized fit. We talked about where you have a more simple option and there's less flexibility, it's going to work for fewer dogs, really, for that maximum comfort. So make sure there's multiple adjustments to get a really customized fit. Make sure that it's built with high quality construction for durability and long-term use. You're all dog, big dog owners, so there's nothing worse than buying a toy and having it destroyed in, in you know two minutes. And so the same would be true for your harness. This is an investment, and so make sure it's built with high quality materials. And um, many of the companies are made here in the USA. I talk about that on the blog. And they also have, like some of them even have like a lifetime guarantee. So if you have any issues or whatever, the manufacturer stands behind their product. And then lastly, number eight, make sure that the harness is gonna be comfortable for your dog. It's able to dissipate heat in the warm summer months and that sort of thing. So just make sure it's, it's the right construction and style uh, for your dog, depending upon kind of where you live and that it's able to dissipate heat. So what is the truth about no-pull dog harnesses for large dogs? Here's the deal. I think that the vast majority of times people say a harness is no-pull, it's really kind of a marketing gimmick. And that's my own opinion. I know that there may be a lot of people that disagree with me, but I think for the most part, hear me out. I, I do believe it's a marketing gimmick. Remember what I said at the beginning of this video, dog harnesses are a tool. They are not gonna be a one size fits all solution for all dog owners and all dogs. And so along the same lines, when you say a dog harness, say the, any of these, I think every single one of these talk about being no pull. If you say this is a no pull harness, a big dog owner that is struggling and desperately looking for an answer and a solution to their pulling dog sees that this is a no pull harness and thinks, well, as soon as I put this on my dog, they're not gonna pull anymore. Well, that I'm afraid is just not going to be the case. I have seen this in my own experience and while there are some advantages that as we talked about before, they, it can help. The way that the pressure points are distributed across the dog's body can potentially help a dog that is inclined to pull or react. Remember, a dog harness is a tool. And so it's a tool just like anything else. We, we talked in a few videos back about the clicker or a leash or a, a treat pouch. Those are tools that we use with our dogs to make our training easier. And so a harness is gonna basically be the same thing. What I would say is that if you are struggling with your dog walking on a, on a loose leash, and if, you, if you're not quite there yet, then really you and I, because I'm guilty as the next person, we have some work to do. And so that is what we're gonna be doing. In, in, a, in future videos, we are gonna be talking about loose leash walking and how to train your dog to be reliable on the end of a leash. And so with or without a dog harness, so here's what I would like to know. If you use a dog harness with your dog, answer yes in the comments below. If you don't, answer no. Tell me about your experience with dog harnesses. What brand do you use? And what feedback do you have about that? I would love to hear, so let's start a conversation in the comments below. With that, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and consider subscribing before you go. We will see you in our next video. Bye for now. I just don't believe that that is ever really the case. Wow, I should not have done this. Hey, all right. I got white pants on, boys. I see you, I see you, I see you. Hold on. I 
And in my experience, Junior, you are walking right in front of the video. Junie! And we're just checking the sound because for some dumb reason, the microphone stopped working.